Good morning. This is your English teacher, Mrs. Shanti of K. V. Ashok Nagar, bringing you the explanation of the poem "Fire and Rice," written by Robert Frost from the book "First Flight" of Class Ten Reader. Before we read the poem, poem, let me ask you a few questions. Do you have ideas about how the world will end? Do you think the world will end some day? Have you ever thought what would happen if the sun got so hot that it burst or grew colder and colder? Read and find out more about the poem. Fire and ice. Some say the world will end in fire. Some say in ice. From what I have tasted of desire, I hold with those who favor fire. Those who favor fire but if it had to perish twice i think i know enough of hate to say that for destruction ice is also great and would suffice the poem expresses the profound idea that the world would end in either of two ways either by ice or fire one group is of the opinion that some day the earth's core will get so heated up and that it would lead to fire destroying the earth's surface on the second group says that if the temperature goes down to an extent that fire that makes life on earth impossible it would have the same catastrophic effect the poet then compares fire and ice with the destructive features of human emotions of human emotions desire and hatred he says that from what he is aware about the fiery desires he would favor the ones who say that it would be fire by saying so he brings about the idea that human beings let the ones rule them and the consequence of unmonitored longing is chaos in the second stanza the poet goes to tell that if the world has to expire twice ice would be equally competent in ending it he brings up ice and hatred the human capability of insensitivity and hatred has the potential for inner destruction though slow and steady it has the same effect that desire has on us so if given an option between fire option between fire and ice ice would be just as good as fire to destroy the world the poet refers to two predictions of how the world will end some say it will end in fire whereas others say it will end in ice poet fire stands for desire greed avarice or lust the more you try to satisfy him them the more they grow there is no end to it the desire spread rapidly like fire and engulf your whole life one bitch and sometimes cruel also on the other hand ice according to the poet stands for hatred coldness and rigidity one becomes insensitive and indifferent towards the feelings of others the poet says that both fire and ice are growing with such a rapid speed such a rapid speed that the world would soon perish either way in fire or ice with regard to the theme of the poem it is extremely a compact little lyric not a syllable is wasted the theme of the poem is the age old question the whether the world will end in fire or in ice The poet decides that any of the two options would achieve its purpose sufficiently well. The poet shares the common belief that everything that exists will have an end too. People are divided on this issue. Some think natural element of fire will cause the destruction of this world. Others believe that ice will be the cause of the end. Putting in terms of human emotions, the elements of fire stands for passion desire and love unbridled passions and desires desires 
can cause the end of the world. The poet has experienced both these emotions. It doesn't matter how the world will end. Even hate, born out of cold, and I see reason is sufficient to cause destruction and the end of the world. So learn from this poem. If human emotions like lust, desire, hatred, intolerance are not going to be curtailed, definitely we are heading into a destruction. We can bring about the end of the world if these emotions are not good. Let us look into the poetic devices. The first poetic device or literary technique used is alliteration. And here are some phrases which have been picked up. Some say favor and fire. fire. The S and S are alliterated. We now move on to symbolism. The two elements of nature, fire and ice, represents desire and hatred. The poet has followed the rhyme scheme as ABA, ABC and BCB. And there is plenty of imagery also used in the poem. The poet uses imagery associated with light, heat and burning pain and coldness. And the tone of the poem is solemn and declarative. There are, there are a few extracts with answers. You may uh, read it for your reference and followed by a uh, few question and answers. And you may look up to Diksha for further reference. And then finally, you have an infographic of the entire poem, which brings you the entire poem in a nutshell. I hope you can understand better and score good marks. Thank you, children.